Right when you need a big play, who shows up? Number 43. One of the things that Troy was really adamant about, he says, look, football gave me my opportunity, gave me my voice. But what I want to give back to the people of Samoa is more than just football. He may be retired, but he's as busy as ever. We travel halfway around the world with Troy Polamalu, today on NFL Films Presents. Tattooing for us is a transition from being a young boy into a young man. It's a uh, painful ordeal. It could take anywhere from four to five to six days, even up to 10 days, depending on how much tolerance they have and to endure the pain. This is the second week now. And hopefully, hopefully we're finished on uh, this Friday or Saturday. It's expected of you that once you wear the tattoo, that you are well versed with our Samoa, the way of life, and serving our chiefs and serving our people, so that you become well versed in every facet and aspect of our tradition. They don't expect too much of that from someone who doesn't have a tattoo. For us Samoa, translated it means the Samoan way the guiding principle of Samoan culture. While he doesn't have a peha, the traditional tattoo, nor was he born and raised on the island, Troy Polamalu has embraced the culture of his heritage. I love what it means to be Samoan, to be self-sustaining, to really embody the warrior-ness of, of being Samoan. Nearly 5,000 miles from the U.S. mainland, deep in the Pacific Ocean, American Samoa is the last piece of rock in the Western world. It's an island of rugged beauty and warm-hearted people. Since officially becoming a U.S. territory in 1929, the people have slowly woven the American way of life into their native customs and rituals Few things from the mainland have caught on more in American Samoa than its most popular sport. As Samoans, we tend to be very aggressive people. Um, it's in our nature, it's in our culture, and we love it. We love it, we, we have the passion, and football it shows all aspects of that passion. Offense, offense. There may be no more picturesque football setting on the planet, but the playing conditions are far from ideal. Oh, um, I, ch I, I look at it in a positive way. I mean, as you can see with the field, as gravel rocks in and everything. So it's, it's what we're, we're dealt with. And when it rains, the drainage is it's not, not, not too well. It's a familiar scene for football programs across an island about the size of Washington, D.C. We have five high schools. And of those five high schools, none of them have a proper football field. I mean, they practice in almost like, you know, uh, backyard type of places. The field, rock, snow, it's not like in the mainland, turf. I fall on these rocks, which means there's no grass. So I get this. Field conditions are just the start of the obstacles football teams face in American Samoa. We don't have a weight room. We have these big tires that we use as, as lifting, and, and that's our probably our only form of lifting weight. Just standard equipment, helmets, it's not up to par. The helmets when I first came here in 1999 were helmets I wore in 1971 in, in high school that were, were sent here to, to play because they didn't have the equipment. Back when I was a young player, you know, they had uh, slippers that they would cut as thigh pads. Some of these kids come in with no cleats, None of them have shoulder pads, none of them have all that. Half of my team, probably the, the younger ones, they don't have pads. So it's kind of hard for us to practice with, uh, like, hitting the right tackling drills. There is no way on God's green earth 
these equipments here used by these kids in Samoa would be okay to be used in the States. No way, it's, there, it's safety hazards. Um, you know, it's, but it's all we have. And you're looking at them and, and you're thinking, there's, there's no way a kid can come straight from here and play at a major university on the mainland. Despite all these challenges, we tend to thrive. Enduring strength. It's a major Samoan character trait, which helps explain why an island of just 55,000 people is represented by over 30 NFL and 200 college football players. The first Samoan and Polynesian to break in the NFL was 1947. Now that's a little before me, but guys like the throwing Samoan Jack Thompson being the third pick in the draft was our RG3 during my generation. Adding a fresh dimension, Thompson became a Roman Samoan. It gave my generation hope to see that these guys play in that box to call a TV. And we're thinking, you know, these guys grew up the same way I, I did, and if they can do it, well, maybe I have a shot. It's because of the success of Samoans like Jesse Sapulu and football players of Samoan descent that a 60 Minutes report notes a Samoan is 56 times more likely to play in the NFL than a non-Samoan American. He throws it over the middle, intercepted. Steelers have it, that's Troy Polamalu. What a play by the best safety in the business. Football has become the method of choice for Samoan boys to get off the rock. Getting off the rock means a lot to a lot of kids because our families aren't really wealthy and this is pretty much one of the best ways for boys is football. It's hard to live in this life. For me, I think this is a better way for me to succeed is by playing football. My last name going to the NFL. It's all I want, my last name, to tell it. It's everything I want, my last name, just to be known to the world. But I ask people to get to know us. Don't just see a Samoan name and you can't pronounce it on the back of someone's shirt. Google us, let, you know, find out who we really are. Hey, this, I know this is our first day back out here. Good job for today. And let's get better tomorrow. You might not notice much of a difference, but like all other American traditions that make their way to the island, football is given a uniquely Samoan twist. Whether it's a coach's speech or a team fight song. <laughs> Bring it down, know the purpose. Bring it out. Know the purpose. Coming up. Whenever I go on the road and you bleed, you know, you remember that that's some own blood, man. And you, you can never run away from who you are. And that's something that's very, very important to my culture. We'll tell you how a group led by people of Samoan heritage, including one of the NFL's biggest stars, is bringing much needed support to the island. There we go, there we go. Is, is very, very important. The Samoan belief is more mua tua, which means put God first. You know, there's three Fs that we go by, you know, faith, family, and football. Evidence of faith can be seen all over American Samoa. But the third F in the Samoan hierarchy also pulls a lot of weight. And when a container filled with critical supplies, including football equipment, needs to be unloaded on the Sabbath, exceptions are made. It also helps that the person bringing the supplies is one of the most well-known and respected football players of Samoan heritage. It is football attire. 
Sunday is an extremely traditional day where people don't even leave their houses hardly. So to be able to get these containers from a ship, haul them you know, with the semi truck, get all these adults that are working to try to get it ready for the children was a huge process. And you know, people really had to make a sacrifice. Large shirt, medium shirt. He, he wears 13 though. Give him 13. Give him 13. 13. 13. Let, us Let us know, man. <laughs> Their efforts are going to support a camp called the Fa'asamoa Initiative, founded by Troy Polamalu and his wife, Theodora. The Fa'asamoa Initiative is basically something that we started to really make a meaningful impact here in the island of American Samoa. We wanted to come back and kind of share our experience, you know, of what I've learned in my life with the people here. You know, I've been fortunate to have a little success in sports in my life. And I always believed within myself that the things that make you successful in sports are the same things that make you successful in life. Polamalu was a leader and guiding force of the Pittsburgh Steelers for 12 seasons. The two-time Super Bowl champ played the game with an unrivaled passion. I've been around football players my whole life. I have never seen someone work harder than him and be more diligent than him, and constantly trying to improve and constantly trying to evolve. It's a characteristic not exclusive to his pursuits on the football field. Well, it's different for me now that I'm done playing football. Now I've actually been able to just really get my hands into um, helping organizing this camp. 2015 marks the Fa'a Samoa Initiative's third and most ambitious mission. In just a week's time, 200 volunteers will work with 1,500 of the island's youth in football and volleyball camps, while reaching thousands more through educational training and free medical clinics. I've spent a lot of time in those. I bet. <laughs> I can actually run one myself. To be able to put this kind of program, this magnitude, with four different components and bringing people from not only just one state, but we're spread out three different time zones, and you're trying to coordinate all this stuff and make this thing happen, it's, to me, it's a minor miracle that we could even pull it off. We you know we're providing a, like a westernized formal education, but it's still very traditional, and we don't want to take the tradition away from Samoa, because that's what makes us Samoan. Before I go to practice or go to school, I have to make sure that my chores are done. There's so many chores to do. But it's all right, it's the life of someone. There he is. Let me get something to eat first. Here you go. Okay, have a nice day, okay? Good. Okay. Bye, good luck. Thank you. Football is, it helps me get out of the house. It's been passed down to me. All my ancestors played it, all my older siblings. Football is life to me, and I have to play this sport. Zarius Moala is a sophomore at Leone High School. If he, his teammates, and hundreds of other high school boys from across the island want to kickstart their chances of achieving their dream, this is the week to do it. This is gonna be a great opportunity for you guys to get yourself looked at. If you wanna play college football, you need to show it to these guys this week that you really wanna play at the next level. You got guys from all over the country who come here for you. Show your good side. Batya! Hey, hey! All right? Today is going to be a big day for us. Finish up, Phil. What about 55 here? Nice read. Oh, nice read. Yeah. Ooh, nice move. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, 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 get up, get up, get up. There we go. There we go. I think you guys, man, it was a great day today. You know, when you're tired, you're
you're sore, you still gotta wake up, and nothing's gonna stop you from achieving your goals. Don't let anything stop you. So we're connected with everybody now. You're connected with what? What's that? Despite what it may seem, football isn't the main industry in American Samoa. More men of Samoa are recruited to the U.S. Army than from any other state or territory. Not surprising, fishing is a major source of income. Welcome to Starkist. Uh, Talo Fatu Troy and the team. Sorry, everybody out there has got to wear one of these. <laughs> Good morning. The big industry really is Starkist. Um, Starkist employs over 2,000 people, and it's really the main industry on this island. These are the blue collar workers that help support this island. But when they break into song and dance, it's just filled with so much emotion and so much passion. It is a life changing experience, no doubt. I am a very proud son of Samoa, and you are all my mothers and fathers out there, and I'm so thankful, humbled, and grateful to be in your presence. Thank you guys for the blood that you've given me, for the humility that you've bestowed upon me through the Fa Samoan way. I love you. Fatai Lava. So why is it so important that we talk about leadership? Because leadership starts first and foremost with who we are. Now, I want to know how you take it to the next level. We wanted to really address the concerns with the education system here and improving it. Your topic sentence is called the TIAS. That sentence should flow exactly from your thesis. We have facilitators from different universities in the United States that developed a curriculum working with the current curriculum here in American Samoa for the schools. If you guys are seniors, let's get a better sentence than that. We see that a lot of the kids wanted to go into some of the things we expected them to say being a professional athlete, an NFL player. But we also wanted to make sure and explore other professions that, they, that they're not seeing. I wouldn't mind working eight hours per day in an office. That is not me. But it might be you, and that's okay. You know, I'm not trying to give them full curriculum plans in this manner, but what we're trying to do is spark it and let a little bit of it sink in to keep them hungry for more. What is the internet? You are now sitting in the most advanced computer center in the entire island of Samoa. We gave 30 computers. We've actually had several children in the program came from a village where they don't have computers in their local school. See all these pieces right here? When they start to figure out what sort of information and the access to information that they have through those computers, it, a whole new world will open up for them. So we're connected with everybody now. You're connected with what? What's that? Columbia. And that's one of the things that Troy was really adamant about when we spoke. He says, look, football gave me my opportunity, gave me my voice. But what I want to get back to the people of Samoa is more than just football. That's how you're connected with everybody in the world through this computer. The camp lasts just a week, but the initiative's work is far from over. What we're doing here today with the medical and volleyball and the education side and football and you know it's really hard to, to pinpoint it but it's progress. Can't describe the smile and just their happiness. I mean you see them talking it's a, and I'm just very thankful. I wish there was another word um, deeper than 
thank you. To be honest with you, I didn't know what to expect when we got here on this trip. But what did I see? The kids, how passionate they were every day. And we did some powerful things with this group that I know will move forward. We need to carry on what they planted. And if we don't, then we're doing them an injustice. We want to make sure that we do everything we can to support this island, really start progressing in a way that these children and the younger generations will have a better life. When I look at the kids of American Samoa, I see lawyers, judges, chemists, CEOs. I see professional football players, volleyball players. I see generals. The important thing is not what I believe and what I see, though, is what they see in themselves. And if you see that in yourself, this is what you've got to do. And that's kind of been our message. A message of pride. Beautiful. A message of progress. A message of hope. Delivered in the Samoan way. Fa Samoa. Fa a Samoa. Fa Samoa. Fa Samoa. Fa a Samoa. Fa a Samoa. On the next episode of NFL Films Presents. All rise. I'm a judge at number presiding. Here comes the judge and the man he used to block for. This guy is uh, one of the great running backs for the Dolphin organization. Kind of extends the glory over the years. Plus. What a great team effort. Everybody had a hand in that win. That's he's a long way from the NFL, but Coach Sherman is back. Y'all thought that I was going to make you make the difference, not me. Don't miss authority figures next week on Fox Sports 1.